Hi, welcome to our new podcast. I'm Roger Newbold. Over my shoulder here is uh, Matt Rich. Hi. We are going to start uh, a series of new vlogs, and I'd like to keep these uh, somewhat short. Um, one for your boss uh, will appreciate this. Uh, your significant other will appreciate this because they'll get a chance to use the computer as well. And the brain cannot absorb more than the seat can endure. But we would like to, to present you a bunch of thoughts and ideas that will better your photo abilities. And maybe give you some short challenges or assignments that you can immediately hear and see and take and use them, um, put them into play in your own photography. Now, I love a good podcast. I love it as much as the next person. I find them incredibly dazzling and, and humorous, but I get so mesmerized by the end, I forget what I was actually trying to learn. So I want to keep these in, you know, the 15 minute range. Uh, but never say never because you never know how it'll turn out. But this is our introduction vlog. So we'd like to share a little bit uh, with you. Uh, so I want you to know that I didn't crash here from some foreign planet beyond those of mortal men. My interest in photography goes back many years in my younger days. I started off with my trusty uh, Kodak Brownie 127. My passion began because I, I just couldn't extinguish it. And uh, I had to kind of give it up for a while to make a, a living. But I became a principal designer in the engineering section of a national firm. But I always kept one foot in photography. I worked nights at one of our local camera stores. Never, never did take home a paycheck, but the toys that I earned were awesome. In 1980, I began teaching classes for our local art center. In 1984, I was promoted to director of photography there and successfully managed several classes and teachers and students over the years. And this all happened while I was working full time. The point is, no matter how busy you become, you'll find a way to do it if you want to. The Art Center had a thriving darkroom and the classes and rental times it gave great guidance for me to build my own darkroom in my own home. To excel in the darkroom I took classes from the absolute best I could find. I took classes with Ansel Adams and Al Weber, Bruce Barnbaum, John Sexton, Chris Rainier, Howard Bond. Now if you're new to photography, these film masters, you can look them up and probably ought to study them because they do some great work and they are my heroes. After years of teaching, I've covered subjects from photo history to film and darkroom, to alternate print processes, street photography, shooting photography at night, uh, all kinds of things. I did 832 weddings and that, that held my interest for a lot of years. But landscape became an overriding subject mainly because <laughs> rocks don't have mother-in-laws. Uh, so I really got into this. Now my friend Matt, he came to the photo game earlier in his life. He was about eight when he began shooting masterpieces with his father's uh, camera, without film of course. I'd like to see those shots. Matt grew up near the Grand Canyon in Arizona, working at their family business, the Jacob Lake Inn. And of course, you can go see Matt's work at mattrichphotography.com and see more of his work at any time. But he worked at Jacob Lake and he really witnessed the natural beauty of what was going on in the Grand Canyon area every single day. 
Uh, I mean, that, that's just got to inspire you to life. In order to make a living in the real world, he earned his bachelor's degree from the University of Utah and then a Master of Science degree from the University of Missouri. And both of his degrees were in civil engineering. His work as an engineer got him involved in construction industry and he developed great talent and put them into great use for the rest of his life. After many years in the construction industry, Matt uh, returned back to Jacob Lake and began to work with his family. Photography just became easier that way, and he shot for the love, it, love of it, and photography, uh, in that sense, he became the truest of all of the amateur amour. With support and encouragement from his family, he began exhibiting his work publicly and now has gallery representation as well. Matt and his lovely wife Shane now reside in St. George, Utah. Matt and I met through the Salt Lake Art Center. He was one of my students and he came to visit in class and we were talking and he says, you know, you ought to come to Jacob Lake and, and uh, see the Grand Canyon. This is just absolutely amazing. And looking at his pictures, I, I just didn't believe it was the Grand Canyon. I didn't know that the North Rim at Jacob Lake was far different, far more secluded and beautiful than anything on the South Rim. So I went, I spent some time uh, with him at Jacob Lake. We toured around, we formed a, a fast bond. We began teaching workshops together in Utah and Arizona. And now the workshops and everything have merged together in our new set of vlogs. You know, we love the interaction of teaching workshops in the landscape. I think that's the best it can be because the information that you receive from a workshop are both timely and immediately put into practice right on the spot. With the pandemic of 2020, personal interactions have been you know, reduced. And so the learning intensity wants to be increased. And that brings us to this point. We're going to do a set of vlogs that you can tune into, that you can take a look at your over and over and listen to them and see what's going on. We want you to subscribe and give us a thumbs up and stand up and give a hoot. Well, not so loud that your boss hears. But, uh, and don't wake up the kids, but be excited. I think this is a, an exciting time in life, and here we are being able to get into these lectures and demonstrations in how to deal with photography. Now, the next three or four that we've got planned, we'll basically go through some ideas. Next time will be how to choose a camera that will really be the best for you, that will really give you some things to think about, what to choose. And then we'll start talking about operations of cameras and some other things in the, in the near future. And of course, if you've got a personal question, once you get on here and become our friend and you subscribe, I want to do whatever I can to help. After having thousands and thousands of students, I know that a good bond between teacher and, and student is possible and that we can be of assistance to you, that your photography will really soar. And we will be doing a bunch of new stuff and helping and forming some great fun relationships. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for becoming a friend with us. Thank you for being the best, and I hope that we can help you here, and uh, your photography will progress. So, until next time, take care, my friends. Thank you. I'm Matt Rich. I just wanted to introduce myself, but more importantly, I wanted to introduce Roger. I first met him 35 or so years ago when I signed up for classes at the Salt Lake Art Center. His classes and his influence played a major part in helping me move from being a frustrated snap shooter to now being a professional photographer. 
The whole time I've known him, he has been a student of photography. As he told you early on, he took workshops from many of the greats. Most of them became his friends. For example, he got to know Edward Weston's two sons, Brett and Cole, well enough that one of them gave him the keys to his California home and said, drop by any time, you're always welcome. If I'm not home, just wash the sheets, clean up, and make sure you lock the door. He spent over a year trying to get an interview with Ansel Adams. Finally, Mr. Adams' secretary called him up and said, Mr. Adams would be willing to meet you on such and such a day for a few hours in the afternoon. Will you be able to make it? Roger said, yes, ma'am, we'll be there. And he loaded up two of his friends. I wish I'd have known him then. And they took off for California. When they arrived, Roger said that walking into that front door and seeing Ansel's Stetson hat on the hallway table was like the coolest thing that he'd ever seen. Ansel was wonderful to them. He was the nicest man you could have asked. He showed them his darkroom. He talked to them about photography. He told them of some of his experiences and what he'd learned. Anything he could do to help, he was just wonderful. Later in the evening, he said, I understand that you brought some pictures that you wanted me to look over. So Roger went and got his pictures, all of them in black and white, and he said, here, take a look at those. Well, Ansel looked them over. On each one, he'd stop for a moment and say, you might consider this, or this one needs a little more burning in this corner. I think it'd be better. Each one, he had just a little, a little help or a little criticism that he thought would improve it. Finally, he came to one and he stared at it for a long time. Roger said he kind of got a little nervous. Finally, after a few more moments of staring, Ansel said to him, Roger, I would buy this one. Roger said, I'll do better than that. I'll give it to you. Imagine having your hero say something like that to you. Roger has received a significant number of awards and recognitions over the years. I will put a link below so that you can look up for yourself all the things that he's done and know of his experience and qualifications. He has done one-man shows, invitational, and juried shows. His work has been purchased and shown in public and in private collections throughout the world. He has curated several shows, including two in Salt Lake City for Ansel Adams. His work has been included in several publications, including five times in the Graphis Photography Annual, which has, I understand, about a thousand to one chance of you being included in that publication. In 1997, he was given an award from the Salt Lake Area Chamber of Commerce it was the Distinguished Honors in Arts Award for his outstanding contribution to the arts in Utah. Plus, he's taught photography nonstop for almost 40 years. Some of his students would come back semester after semester, and Roger kept having to learn new things so that he could teach them something new. I know of no one who has a broader understanding of photography than Roger does. People consult him all the time for help. One example was a few years ago. One of his students' daughter, who was a pretty well-known bridal photographer in California, was hired by a couple to come to Salt Lake City and photograph their wedding. Well, come to find out that one of the things that this couple wanted in their wedding was for the both of them to jump off into a pool with all their wedding clothes on. Roger's student called him up in a panic and said, Roger, it's going to be evening. It's not well lit enough to do this. I don't know how to do this. My daughter doesn't know how to do this. Please help. So Roger packed up, I think, eight flashes and all his gear, came up there, set up the shot, did a couple of test flashes just to see if everything would fire, and then said, tell him to jump in. Boom, he got the shot. It was perfect. I could go on and on. I'm privileged to know Roger, 
and to call him my friend. We are both new to the video world, but we're committed to making a quality YouTube channel. Please give us feedback, ask questions. Between the two of us, we have right around 70 years of photographic experience. Let us help and work with you. By the way, you can find Roger's work on Facebook, and my work is on both Facebook and Instagram. Get back with us, give us your feedback, and we'll do our best to make this a great YouTube channel to help you in your photography. Thank you very much.